see if we can get this going. Yep. I think we're good. I think we're going good. <laughs> There's always a lag in this thing. So I started up on the phone and then I have like, you know, 15 or 20 seconds before it shows up in the studio. Welcome to live Friday nights. Let's see if the, uh, the music is too loud or whatever, right? Not, not loud enough. I'm not going to make it too loud because <laughs> it's system of a down, right? <laughs> so I'm playing uh, toxicity because why not, right? Hey, John. Thanks for stopping by, man. This isn't even just, uh, this isn't me making a video. This is a live show. So I am actually live right now on YouTube and I'll do it for an hour. And uh, I got a lot of stuff to show, a lot of stuff to talk about. Hey, Br Bookish Bryants. Glad to see y'all. Book uh, Becky and Scott. Very cool. Hey, Mark. Mark Richardson in the house. To the lit house. Thanks for coming by. Mark, I love your uh, video earlier. Very, very cool. Uh, to the lit house, you know I love your content. I definitely was digging your uh, video I watched just earlier today. Uh, the Octavia Butler that you reviewed. Very cool. I, I haven't read any Octavia Butler, but I do love sci-fi. And I love that philosophical sci-fi. You know it. You know, kind of uh, sci-fi that really pushes... Uh, Pushes what sci-fi is really all about. Not just all about scientific ideas and applying them to the world building or whatever. But also like how people think and feel. Which is going to be a universal thing. Alright. I think that's good enough. I'll leave it. I'll leave it right there. Yeah, you had some good stuff in that hall, Mark. For sure. I mean, that was a big hall. <laughs> I uh, I was just um, you know uh, just had got home from work when you dropped that so I was able to just check it out my pleasure y'all y'all rock I love I like I I love uh, booktube I mean you know it's like I'll just follow I, I watch so many people's content and you know some I comment on more than others because I got stuff to say. If I got stuff to say, I'll say it. If not, then I just kind of watch. And But I always give a thumbs up every time. And 99% of the time I watch the whole video. I don't play around like that. Nice. You saw System of... Scott saw System of a Down in St. Louis. Mm. I saw System of a Down. Um, I saw them off their first album. It was here in Atlanta, and I saw them uh, when they were, you know, nobody really knew who they were. It was right off their first album, System of a Down, self-titled. And it was awesome. I did I did see that Jason H. is back on his, uh, his channel, and he made a video. I, he couldn't stay away, could he? <laughs> so I subbed already. I saw, I saw Jason's channel, and I subbed, for sure. Um, I'll be keeping an eye. I put the bell on. <laughs> for sure, you know, so I get I get notified right then when he drops a uh, a video. So um, I'm definitely down for uh, to see J what Jason's got going on. I wish he would, I wish he would um, put up that uh, folk alts pendulum videos again. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him straight about that actually. If he's got his own, if he's got a YouTube channel and he's posting videos, if he would just put a playlist up and just load those uh, three videos right into that so that they're available because that folk alt pendulum right there is is happening all right it's happening 2021 nice 
Mm, I love Rammstein as well. Very cool. So we got eight in the house. Eight are watching. Uh, maybe six or seven. Or maybe, you know, a bunch of people are dipping in and saying, Oh, well, who is this guy, Click? You know what I mean? <laughs> All good to me. So, um... I got a lot to get into tonight, but first I wanted to say that um, I got a new banner and I got a new icon. You see, uh, I did a little rebranding on my channel and I, I've never done anything. I just got a Google image and I put it as my banner uh, when I opened the channel up. So I figured, why don't I do something that makes it a little bit more like I care and like put some effort into it, right? So I uh, so I put some effort into it by asking J Maddox Entertainment to make me a banner. <laughs> and he did it. He did a good job too, I think. I like it. <laughs> nice. Nice, Mark. You were uh, in, in construction in my town. That's what we do, baby. <laughs> construction in Atlanta. That's what we do. There's Jason. What's up, buddy? Nice. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, I love System of a Down. And Toxicity is my favorite album for sure. Um, but I like I like all their stuff. I like a lot of their stuff. Um, but Toxicity is like almost a perfect album to me. And uh, yeah, let's do another Folk Ops Pendulum read along next year. Uh, let's do it. Um, I got, I don't know if you saw, I put a, my last live that I did, if you want to check it out, my last live that I did, I laid out all the big books, 10 of them that I'm putting on the TBR for 2021. And there's 10 over 700, some of them over 1,000 uh, big books that I'm doing. Hey, Mario. Thanks for uh, coming to the live, brother, for sure. Nice to see you. Um, so on, that, on my last live last Friday, and it's just on my videos, you know, um, you can see all the all the big books that I'm going to read over 2021. There's a lot of great stuff there. I can't wait to get to most of it. But Folk Alt's Pendulum definitely made the cut. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I could have fit it in this year, you know. Very cool. Yeah, all right. So um, I did a little rebranding. Y'all let me know what you think about the banner. <laughs> I like it, but, you know... Um, I want I want something that really looks like uh <laughs> nice. I wanted to do uh I wanted to do a little something different, so I just changed it up. Yeah. Do the elf on the shelf prank all uh all all holiday season, right? <laughs> very cool. Very, very cool. Hey Jack. The only book I wanna read next year is Folk Alt's Pendulum. Yes. Yeah, so I, I watched all of Jason's videos and, except the last one. I didn't watch the last Folk Alt Spendulum video because I was like, oh man, this is too good. Like, I want, I'm going to read this. I can't uh, spoil. I don't, I don't want to know anything. I don't want anything else. So I didn't watch it. And now I wish I'd, I had at least watched it because it's not available. So uh, thanks for coming by, Jack. Jack, the Rambling Raconteur is, is definitely uh, one of my... One of my favorite channels. I mean, I watch everything you do. For sure. So, um, first off, this was inspired by Jack, actually. I picked this up from a thrift store this week. And, uh, it's the Jeeves Omnibus. This is two complete novels and ten stories. P.G. Wodehouse. Uh, Jeeves. Stories. <laughs> Jack says it's a lot of fun. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's hilarious. So, you know, I got this hardcover right here for, you know, like a dollar. <laughs> it was it was like a it was like a humane society uh, thrift store that that's just up in some town that I never go to. I think it was Cherokee. Cherokee County uh, was where it was and I mean, I was just up there for work and I saw it and, and I saw the spot so I walked in because those kind of places all have uh you know, a bunch of used books just sitting around that nobody cares about, right? So I walked in, and, and this is what I found. <laughs> there you go, Jason. That's how you do it. You make the money, right? I'm going to leave that one sitting right out. 
because uh, that'll be just fun whenever reads, right? I'll just uh, I'll just read I'll just read that at my leisure, just whenever I feel like picking up and reading a short funny story, right? Yeah, everybody everybody's here. Cool, very cool, yo. Yeah, I hear it's really funny. I'm sure I'm gonna love it. And then I got a binding. This is a binding of one of my favorite fantasy series that I've ever read. R.A. Salvatore's Dritzt Trilogy. This is um, Homeland, Exile, and Sojourn. I have these in uh, paperback form, just uh, individual paperback, because I love the covers of that and stuff like this. But I found this at that same uh, thrift store, so I got this for like 50 cents, because it's, um, you know, paperback, right? Trade, but, you know, they just do paperbacks, 50 cents, uh, hardcovers for a buck. So, um, this is a great series. If, uh, if you're looking for some fantasy, that's really cool. It's Dark Elves. They're elves that live underground and are, and are basically evil. They're evil elves. And uh, Dritzt is uh, a dark elf with a conscience. So, he's kind of ostracized and leaves his society. And then he's hunted by the Dark Elves. Um, it's, an, it's an awesome series. Totally awesome. So I, uh, there's a there's a Instagram author that I've been talking with, and he, and he wrote this book that looks really really cool. This is called the Arden, and the uh, the the um, you can see the author is L. S. Popovic, and he's a cool guy, and he is he had sent me this. Because I expressed interest in it. And I was like, dude, weird sci-fi. That's what it is. Weird sci-fi. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm loving I'm loving you guys. Uh, down for my Dritz series. Because I'm telling you, I love that Dritz, Dirt, and um, trilogy right there. I never read any of the others. The Icewind Dale or anything. So, very cool. Yeah, it's a great series, huh? <laughs> I do have great bookshops in Atlanta. Man, I would love to uh to to head to some of the bookshops with you, Jason, for sure. And I and I'll show you all my favorite ones. We have we have some amazing bookshops around. Um I don't go into the inner city and go to my favorite of all time a lot, you know, but I will, that's for sure. So um, the next is L.S. Popovic. Now, I didn't buy this. He sent it to me because I expressed um, interest into it. And I said, look, if I like it, I'll do a review on it on my channel. If I don't like it, I'll just talk to you straight on Instagram about it, right? <laughs> but uh, it's weird sci-fi. Looks cool. About 220 pages. It's going to be just a fun, cool read. And I, I like to support indie authors, that's for sure. Um, it's just going to be, it's going to be good stuff. So that one, just right down there in front. <laughs> I did not block Donahue. Why would I block Donahue? <laughs> I love Steve uh, coming by my lives. I love Steve coming by my lives. It's really fun. It's a lot funner to deal with Steve in my lives and to talk with him like right then than to, uh, deal with the six, seven videos a day that he uh, sends through my <laughs> notifications. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, Becky, you're going to like it. You're going to like it a lot. The Dritz uh, series is really, really cool. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right? <coughs> yeah, he's, he's out there freezing with a torch at the brattle right now. So, somebody sent me this. This is another one. I put the two that sent me. Somebody sent me, and I will find you, okay? that The person that sent me this knows me and watches the channel and whatever. And how they, I don't know. I don't know who it is. And they know, and they're probably watching and laughing and just smiling to themselves. And I'll tell you what, you, you can have it because... Um, you, you can have your satisfaction with knowing that. Hey, Summer. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. 
Salutations, Summer. That's right. But um, I I don't know who did this, and 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 you can have your satisfaction of knowing that I don't know, and you you you're up on it because I got an amazing brand new copy of William Gaddis's Jr. in the mail to this week, and. This is the new edition put out by the New York Review of Books right here that you was talking about on a live, Mark. I had the old uh, first edition trade paperback, and now I have the New York Review of Books first edition here. This is really, really cool. Really, really good. Smells really, really good. <laughs> Book lovers, right? Um... I've, I've thumbed through it, I've been eyeing it, and I'm loving the typeset and how it is. Uh, JR is a very dense work, and it is very, very readable, and very uh, much more enjoyable looking than that uh, first edition trade that I had. So, thank you very much. This is a treat, a real, real treat. That I'm that I'm just that I'm just loving to have. So I did hit an, a thrift store, and I hit a uh, that that kind of um, humane society, you know, thrift store kind of thing. I hit both of those. So the rest of these is coming for. Um, <laughs> These, the rest of these come at a, to, from like a Goodwill or something. But I got a, I got a Norton Critical Edition of Pride and Prejudice because I had just read Pride and Prejudice over this last year and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but all I have was like Dover Thrift Editions and a Barnes and Noble Edition. So I got these Norton Critical Editions have like 20 or 30 essays along with it. So... I, I am going to love getting into that and getting into um, Jane Austen uh, from a critical standpoint a lot more. There is autobiographical notes. There is letters um, from, from uh, Jane to her sister. A bunch of those. Maybe more than, maybe more than one sister. And then there's early writings in here. And then there's a whole section of literary criticism. That looks really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, I would I would hope that Peg doesn't get involved in the uh in the in the uh hall war at either. Because Peg is I've I've said it, Peg is the hall queen. She rocks and she uh she comes at you. She comes at it correct, don't she? I don't know if you're ready for all that, guys. <laughs> the OGBG ain't ready for, for for Peg to jump up in there and kick down the door. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I'm going to catch up. Hey, I ain't fitting to read that. Thanks for coming by. Right on, brother. Yeah, I love the Norton Critical Editions, too. They're, they're just great. I have a, a Norton Critical of... Um, Brave New World, that's great. Totally great. <laughs> yes, see, Pe see Becky, we're not we're not one hundred percent on on opposite sides of the reading spectrum, you know? <laughs> so I, I actually ran across a um a book that I read when I was a very young kid. And I've been looking for this book. Because whenever I looked up on, and tried to find this book, it didn't have the same cover. And it wasn't the same book as I had. So I found the exact book that I read when I was a kid. Not the exact one, of course. But it could be, I guess. But um, this is Harry Harrison, A Stainless Steel Rat is Born. Hardcover. Like a library edition, right? This is like the... the exact edition that I read when I was a young kid and I loved it I thought it was really really cool and so I uh, I will be revisiting this because I actually 
remember very, very little about it. I just remember reading it, and I remember the cover, and I remember liking it, but I don't remember anything about it. You know what I mean? Because I was so young when I read it. So, I, I thought that it might be cool. That would be one that I would revisit, and, and, and we'll see how it goes. Summer's going to like this one. Summer, you are going to like this one. So, I was, uh, you know, looking through a thrift store. Everything was cheap, so I can just grab whatever I want, right? So, I, uh, I stumbled upon this hardcover edition, sci-fi masterworks edition of Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker Guys, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've seen these sci-fi masterworks editions, but they're most of the time not uh, hardcover. They're like just paperback or trade paperback style. So, yeah, I thought you'd like that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, who, Richard, yeah, Mark, I'm, I'm sure, Mark says he loves, uh, the stainless steel wrap, yeah, man, I, I did when I was a kid, for sure, I, I tell you, I don't remember hardly anything about that book, but I just, I, I remember the cover, and I've been looking for it, because I was like, I thought it was so cool, this cat, this stainless steel wrap, coming out of the egg right there, you know? So I'm going to revisit that one and maybe read some of the series for sure. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like that. It's very it's a very cool um edition for sure. And then <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty 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 cool. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, to stick with the sci-fi for a minute, um, I got I got a, a, a paperback of an old book, a, a book that I borrowed from a friend and read from a friend a um, few years back, maybe four or five years ago. I borrowed this from a friend, and um, I really do love this book. <laughs> nice. Becky has read... Um, I, sh I need to keep up with the chat a little better. I can't, I can't, you know, like, I just want to keep, I just want to keep talking, you know? And then I look over and I'm like, oh, God, it, ch the chat's going. But y'all can talk amongst yourselves, but I wish there was a way that you could, like, do something to make it, you know, stand out to me so that I, like, see, like, oh, well, that's somebody talking directly to me. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's a great cover on it, huh? I got some great covers on these books that I found. I'm, I'm so lucky, I tell ya. <laughs> nice, Mario. <laughs> some of the Masterworks editions are pretty collectible. Cool. I, uh, I don't, you know, I have some Philip K. Dick in the Sci-Fi Masterworks. I have some, um, Ursula K. Le Guin. And then I have that Douglas Adams. I don't really, you know, I don't, if I go for like some just straight, straight typical genre, I'll go for sci-fi. But a lot of times I don't go for that. I just go for like, you know, reading literary fiction. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> money, baby, money. All right. So, um, the, the older book that I borrowed from a friend and read and really, really enjoyed is Larry Niven's Destiny's Road. I'm not going to spoil it, but this book has a great ending. This book has a great story, and and what it means, it's a kind of a, you don't, you don't know what's going on, the main character doesn't know what's going on, but is on this kind of journey, and the reveal for what is actually happening in this book is really, really good. This is a really strong uh sci-fi novel as far as you know like a unique take on a uh on a on a on a on a world where um human beings are just 
getting a foothold and, you know, just establishing a, a society. They're not, you know, fully populating the planet or anything like that. Um, come on, Jane Austen. I'm going to let it, I'm going to let her lean. Jane Austen can lean. But, um, I don't know if anybody's read this one, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. I like Larry Niven's stuff. Um, that Moat in God's Eye, that's a really, really cool, um, story. And, um, I never read Ringworld, but I did... Uh, I mean, I have heard a lot about Ringworld because that's like his thing, and it sounds really, really cool. Does it look like the full? Does it? It 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 very much is that he's a uh, he's on a quest, and he doesn't know what he's even you know getting at. He's not really on a quest. He's just he's just the full, you know, the main the main character, and uh, you're gonna. Good, good calling that out, Becky. That's for sure. This is this is really really fun. It's a sci-fi, but it's a loose sci-fi. It's not it's not it's not high, real high sci-fi. Um, you're just on a world that's not Earth, with a population that, you know, is an indigenous, uh, new, you know, kind of population to the planet. They don't really know. They don't have a history. You know what I mean? They don't have any history or historical data. Nice. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Steve. Thanks for coming by, man. For sure. Man, I almost got the whole OGBG uh, book club here. <laughs> The OGBG, so I guess you don't say book group or book club after that. That would be redundant, right? So I almost got the whole OGBG here. <laughs> yep, Steve in the house. All right, so I got a Norton Critical Edition of Jane Austen's Pride and I got a Norton Critical Edition so I can uh, explore some of her, her, other, her letters are in there and then some critical essays on Jane Austen. And then um, somebody, some awesome person sent me the New York Review of Books edition of William Gaddis's JR, the brand new edition that New York Review of Books just put out. Sorry. It's very well done. Gaddis, Gaddis uh, like, like the minimalist style, so I hear. So I think they were going for that. We know you're all about the minimalism, Steve. <laughs> I got Ari Salvatore's Dritster Orden Trilogy. I love this series. I love this. This is some fantasy that I love. But I got it binded in one binding. I have them uh, in separate, in separate, um, you know, uh, paperback forms. <laughs> That's right, the bad boys of book dude. What do you think? What do you think? I'm getting it. It's coming in on the I'm trying, Jay. I'm trying. It's just getting in on the on the chops there more. Um Jeeves Omnibus. Two novels and ten stories. PG Wodehouse. I've never read any Wodehouse. Jack Rambling Rack and Tour loves it. Timmy at Lost Cunningham read some uh, PG Wodehouse. And said that that it's funny and fun and totally cool. So, I found this for a buck. Uh, big boy, I love it. Just a killer find. I got, and you can see, you can see my. I read this when I was really young, so I'm just gonna head and show it again because I love this. This is like a nostalgia piece for me. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit that because I don't remember much about it. And then I showed, uh, I found a hardcover sci-fi masterworks of Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker Guys, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Very, very cool. And then I got a independent author 
sent me a uh, weird sci-fi. I had I had expressed interest in his book because it's weird sci-fi, and I love that kind of stuff. You know, Philip K. Dick and stuff. So um, he sent this to me. So I'm gonna check out his 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 novel. The Arden is what it's called. And then um, I'll go ahead and show two together. <laughs> That's funny. Where's the website come from? <laughs> Tell me. Uh, the the independent author? I just found him on Instagram. If that's what you mean by where's the website come from. <laughs> nice. Nice, see? That's how it goes out there in Arizona, Jack. You got the fire pit going. You can just hang out up under the stars, baby. So, um, I got two by Jeffrey uh, Eugenides. I've never read any Jeffrey Eugenides, but um, I loved the Virgin Suicides movie when I was when I was a lot younger. I love it. And the music to that movie is really, really great. But I found these in the in the in the thrift store. So I just grabbed them. They're totally good reading copies. They're totally, totally uh, fine reading copies. So I I will get me some uh, Jeffrey Eugenides uh, over this next year for sure. And um, it's been so long since I saw the virgin suicides and it was it's probably fine because the feeling is what it's all about that uh that movie was a really atmospheric movie and so um i think that the the book will have you know its own thing going since the movie was very atmospheric with the with the music and the and and the and just how it played out cinematically, that the book will you know probably give me a little bit better. But the Virgin Suicide Sides is very very highly regarded, and you know, um, so is most of Jeffrey Eugenides, um, at least his big three, right? So um, we'll see. Nice. Yeah, I hear I hear great things about Middlesex that it's that it's just a wonderful exploration of characters, uh, character driven. I think is what I heard. Hey, Aaron, think nice to see you for sure. Thanks for coming by. Um, I've never read The Head Handmaid's Tale or seen the show or anything like that. Um, I'm not I'm not up on Margaret Atwood to tell you the truth. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind checking it out, you know, if it's, if it's good enough that they, uh, adapt it big, big, big style, then I assume that it is good stuff. So, let me, uh, let me just get situated here with the, uh, Jeffrey Eugenides action. Jeffrey Eugenides won a Pulitzer for Middlesex. So, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong uh, if, he, if he won a Pulitzer Prize in literature, <laughs> you know. Um, it deserves a read, at least a read, right? The super hottie and, uh, <laughs> it was Josh Arnett, for sure. <laughs> I was thinking Kirsten Dunst, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking Kirsten Dunst, but, you know, why would you be, uh, she's blonde, you know, so why would Steve be worrying about that? <laughs> oh, it's driving me nuts. And I grabbed a quick, I grabbed a little, uh, Thich Nhat Khan that I've never read, an exploration of love and, uh, how to uh, allow and open the, 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 in, the your heart the emotional side to be able to actually give and receive love on a on a on a higher and higher level it is it looks really really cool it's really really quick really really short but 
very penetrating teachings, I'm sure. Uh, Zen is amazing stuff. Um, and it, he, he, he is a Zen Buddhist, uh, Vietnamese Zen Buddhist. But um, all, all, all the teachings are, are Mahayana Buddhism. So um, I'm going to check that out just whenever I feel like, right? And then I got last one for the haul is I got a, a copy of Kazu Ishiguro's uh, The Remains of the Day. I hope I didn't butcher that too much. <laughs> the Remains of the Day. I've never read it. And Ishiguro has a new has a new album. Or a new... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm listening to System of a Down. Has a new book coming out this year called... Uh, what is it called? First Person Singular. Sounds really, really cool. Sounds really, really cool. <laughs> y'all are too funny man y'all are killing me yeah so I, I wanna I wanna check it out I wanna check it out but uh, I, I kinda wanna check it out then and, and get his new book over this next year because it does seem really really cool first person singular I believe is uh, is about a kind of an AI toy like a like a robot AI toy that is sitting on the shelves watching people and the society and stuff and it's from the perspective of that toy wanting to be bought wanting to you know everything like that yeah yeah Jason Thich Nhat Han is powerful he's really really powerful and I mean all of his stuffs comes from a uh, Buddhist Sutra, you know what I mean, and, and Buddhist doctrine, so, um, he's just, he's really just making, uh, doctrine plain, in plain speaking, for, for, for people to understand, and, uh, it's commendable, that's for sure. So that's it for the whole, and, uh, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I love I love s'mores. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Steve loves the quiet contemplative silence. Um as soon as as soon as uh Frida stops jumping around, he turns on his video. His, <laughs> the video <laughs> to give us another <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> You're killing me. I love this. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. Hey, Christy. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by the channel. We're having some fun. You can see the haul action. Now, I didn't buy all these. Uh, two of these were given to me. and uh, But I have found some amazing stuff. And, I mean, just... This is a Norton Critical Edition of Jane Austen. It's getting the the light so I don't know if you can see that but I only had like a Dover Thrift edition so I bought a uh, Norton Critical edition of that <laughs> hey Danny Spinelli speaks in the house as well thank y'all for coming by I tried to do I like to do uh, my lives a little bit later so that um, you know Jack can come by and, and and people that are not on the East Coast you know if I do a haul if I do a live video at like seven o'clock then it's like five o'clock or four o'clock for y'all out there on the west coast. So I want it. I want it to be cool for everybody. Hey Abby, Merry Christmas. <coughs> hey Abby, thanks for coming by the channel. Nice to see you. <laughs> everybody, cool. So cool having a lot of people by for sure. So I'm about two hundred and. 50 pages through David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. This is a tragedy so far, <laughs> okay? I mean, David Copperfield is in such a bad way. I'm probably, you know, a third of the way through the book. And it's just like, this boy, he can't cut a break. I'm reading this in, along with uh, Lou Kosh over at A Cruel Reader's Thesis. Um, we're having a lot of fun talking about this. Um... It's really, really cool, and 
Wow. I, I had no idea I was in for such a tragedy. That's for sure. Jason, thank you so much for staying up late with me, brother. I miss you. I miss seeing you, Jason. That's for sure. I think we all, I think we all do. Because, you know, who else can get on a video and talk about, you know, five books for 40 minutes? <laughs> I love it, man. I do miss your content, brother. Thank you, Christy. I, I have a lot of fun with lives, and they, they're turning out to be some of the funnest stuff that I do on BookTube. So, um, I'm really, I'm really liking it. <coughs> don't go to bed, Jason. Don't listen to Mark. You don't have to listen to Mark. He's not your friend. He's not your dad, okay? He's your friend. He's your buddy. But he does not tell you what to do. You don't have to listen to that. <laughs> How do I keep it so pristine? I'm an easy reader. I'm an easy reader, Steve. Yeah. I mean, you know, I haven't I haven't read it much to tell you the truth. 250. But I mean, I don't I don't open it up no more than that. And I mean, you know. You know. I mean, it's a it's a little dog in up here, you know. I mean, I didn't do that though. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I didn't do that uh, at all. That was like that when I got it from the uh, used bookstore. So, um, that's a slow read for me, though. It's, it's just, it's, it's good prose, and we're liking it, but it's just not, it's just not going fast to me. Yeah, this album is back-to-back -back bangers, man, all day long. I love toxicity. All the way, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I turn the page every every two minutes <laughs> instead of you know 10 pages uh, a minute you know 10 pages in 30 seconds um awesome jason's busting all right jason thank you for coming by brother nice to see you that's for sure good night sleep good <laughs> <laughs> yes get him steve get him so um um, Dictionary of the Khazars by Mallory Pavic. This is this is a lot of fun. This is cool. And it is something that is a very unique experience. I have not read anything like this in any kind of way. The end papers are really cool. This is pretty cool, for sure. <laughs> I do. I treat my books very well. I'm a, I'm a very careful reader. You know what I mean? I, I, like, I want to keep my books um, and keep them nice. So um, I, don't, I, don't, um, I don't ever bend the cover back. I don't ever open a book, like open it, like fully open it. Because why? I only do what I have to do um, for my books, that's for sure. One seven-minute video a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One, I mean, Steve will make a seven-minute video just petting Frida. <laughs> so, um, a sneak peek. I got a sneak peek for you guys. Um, I'm going to do a comparison video. Christy, I loved... Your comparison video. I watched it today. Um, I didn't have much comment on it because I never read either of the books. Um, she compared uh, my cousin Rachel with uh, Rebecca. And uh, the the author is Daphine uh, de Maurier or something like that, right? But uh, I'd never read either of them. Never seen the, the, the movies or anything either. But... Um, I loved it. It was really cool, and I'm and I'm setting up. I'm gearing up for a comparison video of my own. So what? I, this is what I'm gonna compare. So I was in a live with Josh at Working Man Reads, and we got into a little bit of a debate. Not me and Josh, but just everybody that was in there was talking about uh, post-apocalyptic novels, 
And so, of course, people bring up the stand, right? This is my most abused book that I own. The cover and the back cover is held on by electrical tape. I've had this since I was a very, very young, uh, younger reader. And this is the unabridged stand by Stephen King. So I'm, I'm, uh, going to compare the stand by Stephen King, which is, you know, a very well known and loved post-apocalyptic, apocalyptic novel, right? And I'm going to compare it to one of my favorite uh, post-apocalyptic, apocalyptic novels of all time, Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon. And I have kicked around the idea, and I have thought about it, and I have figured out what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it in a way. I mean, you know, I just kind of this weekend, for sure. Not a video on this, but a video comparing the two books and like uh, just exploring the different kinds of ways that they do the same kind of book. A post-apocalyptic, um, supernatural, post-apocalyptic story. Because the, the, the stories are kind of uh, similar, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. The Earth Abides... That's for sure. Hey, uh, hey, Brian. Brian at Bookish in the house. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Yeah, man. Everybody's been doing that. I saw, I saw your, what is it? Yola Boca Flood? <laughs> Tag today. Everybody's doing that. Yo I've been tagged in it. Who's, I think Peg over at the History Shelf tagged me in the Yola Boca Flood tag. So I am actually covered up under tags. I like Wolf Sour. I like a lot of McCammon, actually. I like Mystery Walk a lot. Boy's Life is like one of the highest, um, most most praised uh, books by Robert R. McCammon. You did a good job on that tag, uh, Brian. That's for sure. I'm, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get my thoughts together because I got four tags that I'm tagged in right now. <laughs> Uh, Jack hit me in the burger tag. Mark hit me. Mark Richardson hit me in the literary dinner party tag. So I'm, I'm going to have some burgers on my way to my the literary dinner party because I don't know what they're going to be serving. Right? <laughs> and then I got the self-aware reader tag. Um, thank you to the Lit House for tagging me in that one. And then I got the Yola Boca Flood. PDX tag that was that uh, Peg over at the history shelf hit me with so I Think I'm just gonna after my literary dinner party where I'm gonna be super full as it turns out They did serve some some good food I'm gonna stay up drinking and and lapse into the self-aware readers tag <laughs> And then I'm gonna finally pass out and dream the Yoka Boca flood tag <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm listening to uh, System of a Down, Toxicity. It's a it's an album called Toxicity by System of a Down. <laughs> Steve, see Brian, you don't have to take that, okay? You don't have to take that over here, Brian. This is my live. I can, I'm 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 giving you full full freedom to just. Uh, Tearing to Steve on the chat. Go. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I saw your blitz, man. That was awesome, too. Jones and Forjanus. That's right. That's what it is. Jones and Forjanus is on. And Christy dropped her video like right before you uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna announce it. I can't wait to see it, Jack. You gotta do it. Uh, because it is a it is a great idea for sure. It's gonna be so funny. <laughs> yeah, do it. Well, um, the Streamlabs that I run on here is. It you know, a little tree. 
You're like in a nest in the tree. It's a very nice place. <laughs> he feeds on it. Yeah, like mana from heaven. I love it, Brian. <laughs> That's fun stuff, man. Very cool. So, um, I have started. I'm going to do, you see, this is the burger book tag. And then I'm starting the literary dinner party tag right there. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to stop for a burger. the literary dinner party and then I'm gonna do the self-aware reader and then the Yoka Boca flood and I think I'm gonna make a little story out of it like that <laughs> we'll see how it turns out <laughs> very cool so I hope y'all enjoyed the the haul action and um, check out my new banner and uh, let me know what you think I would like to um, you know I want it to be cool. I want it to look like I <laughs> like I tried. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I didn't try. I want y'all to know that I did not try. Uh, my new banner is made by J Maddox Entertainment. That's how I try. I ask J Maddox Entertainment to do a, a banner for me. <laughs> and he did it. It was it was really really nice and really kind of him and I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, you can't get me. I mean, I can destroy I can destroy the whole chat right now by just one 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 finger. This finger. I can destroy the whole chat with this finger. <laughs> Jason can't get to sleep with you blathering on like this, Steve. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. There you go, Becky. This is for you. Bam. Yes. It's a, it was a nice haul. For sure. I like to find stuff like that. That I like. That I'm looking for. That I, um, you know, are not necessarily going to go out. Go, go, go seek a new copy or a nice, you know, like an... A, a copy that I'm gonna pay money for. I look out in thrift stores, and I and I and I, you know, I find them eventually. <laughs> That's right. I have the power. <laughs> Steve, Steve's asking. He's gonna do a comparison video. What should his themes be? <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, thank you, Summer. Jack, Rambling Raconteur, did my nostalgia tag. I, I created a tag, and I, I thought it was... You know what I mean? Because it's really... It's all about nostalgia. But that's the kind of guy I am. You know what I mean? I love, I love certain books. That's why I bought this book right here. Because I remembered being a, a, ver a younger reader... And reading it and it affecting me. And I was just like, I always. Nostalgic. Kind of person, you know. And so I, I did it. I did a tag called the nostalgia tag. Nostalgia be everybody's thing to get all kind of sappy and remembery on the tag. So um, all good. <laughs> but Jack at Rambling Rack and Four didn't. <laughs> very cool all right so it seemed like it uh kind of got bogged down there for a second but all good <laughs> hey jack getting a bit bogged down for some reason <laughs> yeah, I think it's getting a little bit bogged down, but that's okay. Um, 
I was just kind of saying that I uh, appreciate Jack and Dario over at Motley Reads for both doing my nostalgia tag. And, uh, you know, it's really just for those who feel inspired by that feeling, by their books, to do that. Um, because that's the kind of reader and the kind of, uh, <laughs> that's just the kind of person I am with with my books, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, normal people versus Carl of Nausgaard. <laughs> that's a great one, Jack. I love it. Ah, I would love to hear Steve's ideas on Southern writers. That's right, Brian. I would love to hear Steve just compare Southern writers. Hemingway, Faulkner, O'Connor, Harper Lee. Bring it. <laughs> let's 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 uh let's hear it. <laughs> oh my god. Y'all are so funny. <laughs> Steve, you're hilarious, man. <laughs> Single problem started when Brian showed up, I'm just saying. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. I love it. So, um, this has been a fun life, for sure. O'Connor would win if it was a competition. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a competition. But if it was a competition, Flannery O'Connor would win, for sure. Two novels. Two novels. Uh, both, both of them short. And a collection of short stories, maybe... 40 short stories and her work is more powerful than all, all, all the others like that. I would say, you know, I mean, just, just succinct raw power in her writing. Totally awesome. <laughs> Mark, good call. Yeah, but Cormac McCarthy is not, from the south either but cormac mccarthy is very much like a southern writer in his in his style you know what i mean i don't think cormac mccarthy is from the south at all i don't i don't remember i don't remember uh where he's from exactly that's right christy christy knows christy knows what's up she's read i mean see and that's where you really get to like the real Flannery O'Connor is reading her letters. That's when you really are like, you see her as a person and what she was really about like that. Um, her letters. <laughs> Do it, Jack. Do it. I love this. Man, you guys are so funny. <laughs> Would O'Connor beat Welty? Um, I'm not. I'm not very versed on Welty's stuff. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. You know, uh, willing to 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 put all my chips on it. But I will just go ahead and say that O'Connor would win. <laughs> I mean, Fran 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 O'Connor is not like the greatest writer ever. She is my favorite. <laughs> you know, one of. She's she's in my top five for sure. She's definitely my favorite Southern writer. Um, I I, I don't think that it's like a, a thing where I would say she's better, you know, like that she would win out over others um, critically in a critical competition, you know. Flannery O'Connor definitely has her had her gimmicks, had her own thing that she did, and it's very very effective. And it's very, very uh, unique. It's her own thing. So I just want to, uh, you know, put that out there. That is a, it's not a thing where I'm, I think that she's like the best, best. But she is my favorite. In a big way. So we, uh, we're over an hour here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. It's late for me. I had a brutal week this week at work. But I've been looking forward to this all day. The lives have turned out to be really, really fun. And some of the most enjoyable uh, 
time that I spend on on YouTube. So I appreciate everybody coming by. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jason, the OG BG in the house. Thank you, Jack. Really means a lot for you to come by, brother. Thank you from the Lit House. I ain't finna read that. Danny at Spinelli Speaks. Um, Chris, me, and um, I dig that about y'all. <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Mario. New, uh, new uh, faces that um, I, I, I think I saw Aaron on the live last week. And Mario, this is the first time. Brian at Bookish, thank you for coming by, brother. This was really, really cool. Nice to see you. And um, <laughs> um, I, I know there's always uh, some that I forget that have come by, and 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 we've even talked a little bit on the on the thing. But um, I still, you know, just forget when I just go to rambling off the names. But I do want to thank everybody. I really do. Because it's very, very cool to have friends and uh, book book friends by. Very cool. All right. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Thank you for spending an hour of your Friday with me, guys. And um, catch you on the flip side. Bye.